Now, the Reserve Bank of India, having tightened those norms on peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending for NBFCs, it's a move that took place on Friday, and we reported it here on this very show. It's clearly a bid, like we mentioned, to improve transparency, to improve compliance. But what we're learning from sources is that some lenders have already halted withdrawals and investments under the purview of these new guidelines. So it's definitely going to have an impact. But what exactly have we seen so far? Let's find out. My colleague Anurag Shah has been uh, taking uh, news around this uh, and putting it in context for us. He's joining us to uh, share with us what he's learned. Anurag, do tell us about the new RBI guidelines and the kind of impact it's had on industry already. After RBI's guideline on P2P lending, uh, few uh, P2P lenders have stopped the early withdrawals as per our sources and uh, uh, companies are in discussion with the RBI also on the uh, recent new guidelines of P2P lending. As per the new guideline, there's all the transaction uh, will be routed through a dedicated escrow account uh, uh, and uh, the early withdrawals which used to happen and the lender used to uh, transfer uh, one lender to another lender which won't be allowed as per the new guidelines. Uh, so the, the, that has made uh, P2P lenders to stop the early withdrawals for time being. There are uh, few lenders which have uh, stopped the early withdrawals and they are in discussion with uh, RBI. Remember in last few years the, the P2P uh, lending has gone. Uh, uh, gone uh, has grown up uh, many folds uh, because the spread uh, in P2P lending used to be very high. Uh, uh, lender used to give a loan uh, for the P2P lending. Yes, indeed, Anurag. Uh, so the implications are many, and we are trying to understand uh, the impact of this on industry as well. In fact, we had a word with Bhavan Patel earlier this evening. He's the co-founder and CEO of Lendain Club. Uh, this is what he had to say about uh, the kind of stricter norms that the RBI has introduced when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer lending. Here he is. At the industry level, uh, as, as also rightly coined, that there will be cash flow disruption because uh, there was a secondary market where the trading of the loan used to happen between a lender to lender, which is now uh, stopped as per the new set of regulation. Uh, so time being, that will create a cash flow disruption uh, and, and that will have a larger impact uh, at the overall industry. However, the second biggest impact which we are envisaging is uh, in terms of T plus one guideline, which now the regulator has said for managing uh, money flow coming from the lenders and borrowers. So I think that is also a little bit uh, harsher in terms of uh, managing the T plus one timelines. If we look at the overall uh, capital market or the financial market, the T plus two, T plus three are general timelines. Even in case of payment gateway, it is T plus two and T plus three because you have to reconcile the money. You have to ensure who has transferred it and accordingly you process the money. Uh, so I think that is a second uh, largest impact which will happen at the industry level. So those could be uh, significant, uh, what uh, we're hearing from uh, Bhavin on uh, this entire issue on the likely impact on industry. But let's get in a word from Mr. R. Gandhi, who's joining us now live on uh, Business at Nine. He's the former Deputy Governor of the RBI. Mr. Gandhi, such a pleasure having you on the show. If we can backtrack a little while we're hearing from industry that uh, the impact is not going to be large, but yes, cash flows could be impacted. And I will come to that in a moment. But can you don the RBI's hat for us and explain why the RBI decided to tighten these P2P, these peer-to-peer -peer lending norms? What risks, what concerns, in your understanding, prompted this move? Uh, thank you. Uh, there are two principles which we have to understand. Uh, one is that the difference between investment and uh, lending and borrow. That is one. And second, uh, the P2P is a platform it is not it is an intermediary it is not uh, supposed to deal in finance these two principles we have to understand uh, before uh, reflecting on the changes which the reserve bank has brought in right now the lending and borrowing is distinct from investment lending and borrowing means that when once you lend the borrower as and when he repays then you get the cash flow not before that whereas investment you can have a different uh, proposition where you can have early withdrawal and the early um, redemption kind of thing. Whereas uh, in a uh, lending and uh, borrowing business, that is typically is not supposed to be there. That is uh, one. Then second, the P2P is a platform, as I said, in the sense that they are neutral. They are providing a technical service of bringing in 
the borrowers and lenders together. So for that purpose, it cannot assume certain responsibilities like providing liquidity or providing insurance or providing some safety. All those things are not the call of, are not supposed to be the call of the platform. So that is why the, if you understand these two principles, then it will be easy to understand why there is a bank has brought in certain clarity, which in the, in the market, there were some uh, misunderstanding or misinterpretation. There's a bank now clarifies that yeah, you cannot be doing certain things because indirectly you, you should not be assuming the role of a financier. That's what is the uh, basic point. So because to be a financier, you require a separate license. Right. So, Mr. Gandhi, you're saying that certain rules were being flouted and which is why we have seen the RBI tighten these norms. But when you do that, it's definitely going to have an impact. Uh, market people are saying this has prompted a halt on withdrawals and on investments. Do you sense a liquidity problem brewing over here where cash flows do get hit and that may get in the way of uh, T plus one and even T plus uh, zero settlements in the future? Uh, T plus one, because here the very proposition when we understand that there is not supposed to be early redemption of whatever uh, uh, borrowing I mean, lending that you have done, then it, the question doesn't arise at all whether T plus one is going to create a problem. Because in the, uh, the end of the new arrangement, clearly each lender's relationship with particular borrowers have to be clearly uh, kept within the realms of the P2P platform. And then when the lender, uh, when a borrower repays the money, then it is clearly markable to, uh, to whom it should be sent. So it should not take more than that T plus one. It should be possible for them when they use such technology, it should be possible for them to remit the money yeah, on T plus one basis. The idea is that platforms should not enjoy the float funds for more than a day, thereby more than minimum uh, time that is required. That is what is the first. Mr. Gandhi, the question is about cash flows and whether you see those getting affected because of the stricter norms. A cash flow is for whom? Cash flow for the lender you are talking about, right? So when a lender... Norms, uh, uh, yes. Yes. Participation yeah. on P2P lending gets affected because now you have stricter norms in place. Uh, so right. not many more people are going to be using those platforms to be able to keep that liquidity cycle moving. Do you see that impact come through? Obviously, that is a brand now under the, the new lenders where will hereafter come forward. They will have to understand when they lend, the money is with the borrower until he repays. So that with, the, with that, when they are ready to wait for that much period, whatever pricing that they would want and they would agree between the lender and borrower, then I, I don't see why there should be a cash flow problem. Everything depends upon clarity on both the sides of the borrower and lender. Once the terms are agreed on, this is what it is, then I, I, I don't think my lender will hesitate to lend just because he, he, he will not be able to redeem uh, earlier than originally what he had planned for. Okay, Mr. Gandhi, in your assessment, uh, tell us what you think is going to be the impact of these uh, norms, these stringent norms, uh, or more stringent than what they were. How will it impact the growth and the operations of P2P uh, platforms that the RBI perhaps may have factored in, may not have even? Any restriction that are brought on by the regulation will always have an immediate impact because whatever was the practice until yesterday, it, from today onwards, it is not doable. Then to that extent, there will be a temporary uh, reduction in the turnover relating to this kind of uh, lending and borrow. So that will happen. But over a period, given a period, when everybody understands it full, this is what is the new norms, then everybody will play by that uh, rule, a new rule. Then uh, slowly, they, because ultimately what we are talking about here, this uh, there are needy people. There are people who want to lend to those needy people. So long as the terms are agreed on, let them uh, lend and borrow. So that is a principle. So once a new set of rules are known, both the sides clearly understand it, then the business will be back again. Uh, when you consider the balance in these regulations, the balance for the need for consumer protection, when you uh, try and put that weight against the goal of fostering financial innovation that the RBI would obviously work on, would want to encourage, are there any areas where you think the RBI may need to show a little more flexibility, you think, in uh, these systems as they develop? Uh, 
uh, I, I do not think that is there right now under the new rules, whatever has come, that there can be any kind of modification. I don't think there is a, there is an argument in favor of that because the very purpose is that when you lend, you be clear that it is a lending job, a lending function. It is not investment function. So that the lender will have to have clear understanding of that. That is what is the Reserve Bank is driving home to the point to the lenders. Be aware this is a lending. That means that you have to wait for the period for which the loan has been uh, agreed on. Until that period, you cannot be expecting a cash flow. So that is a clear message. The second message is that as an intermediary, the P2P platform, you cannot be enjoying the funds of the lender or the borrower. The funds, once it has come from the lender, it is due to the borrower, it should go immediately. And when they and they say same way, when the borrower has repaid the money, it is the funds of the lender, so it should go back to them. So at the quickest possible time. And today, because of electronic transmission, digital transmission is possible, it has been established again, then why there should be longer period uh, where you should be uh, holding the funds. So that is what is the bad uh, I don't think Reserve Bank is likely to make changes in these uh, uh, two new directions. Yes. But Mr. Gandhi, in passing, would you say there are any broader implications when you consider our goals towards financial inclusion and the growth of uh, the credit ecosystem in the country? See, uh, yes, uh, because uh, Financial inclusion is a much, much larger uh, uh, challenge. So every type of new thinking will have to be experimented and uh, tried upon. So uh, when the market would bring forth certain new ideas, Reserve Bank should be willing to uh, look at that. And given the uh, possible risk which it can create, subject to that uh, risk of uh, ring fencing of those risks, Reserve Bank should be permitting those new ideas to come. New ideas will definitely keep coming and of course those will need to be moderated and that's the role of the regulator which in your opinion the RBI is doing. We'll see exactly the direction in which uh, this goes as far as the impact is concerned. Friday the rules were announced and already we are seeing a, a halt on uh, withdrawals and investments. At least uh, reports are suggesting that, that some of the uh, um, people on platforms are actually uh, halting them. But uh, yes, the impact will have to be considered not on a knee-jerk reaction, but on a long-term basis. Mr. Gandhi, it's always a pleasure getting in your perspective. Thank you very much for joining us with your views you. on Business at Nine. Thank appreciate you. it. And time Bye. for us to wrap things up on this edition of Business at Nine. But of course, uh, the promise is always to be with you every weeknight at 9 p.m. That's when we hope you're going to keep your date with us every weeknight. I'm Vikramosa. For me and the team, thank you and good night.